Hello everyone. Hopefully you can hear me and you can see the screen. Good day to all. Welcome and thank you for joining us to our new session of Bexel Manager Online Education. My name is Mila Tapejovic and I'm B Manager at Bexel Consulting. At the beginning, I would like to for all of you who are with uh, us for the first time, introduce you Bexel Consulting Company. Uh, we are focused to, to our work and expertise is construction management, but we also uh, more than 15 years in software development. So our flagship product is Bexel Manager, which helps us in our common workflow on the projects around the globe, and we are present in around 40 countries and we have implemented BIM on our projects in five continents. So our company is member of Building Smart International and we are happy that uh, third time consecutive uh, in a row actually uh, on a different projects our company is a finalist in Building Smart International Award competition. So the list of our partners and resellers around the world is growing every day. And we are proud that we have successful collaboration with the academic institution and educational users from more than 130 countries. And we strongly support all of them. And therefore educational licenses for students and staff are free. At uh, this moment, our platform is available in several localized versions and the uh, development of additional localized versions is in our roadmap. Today, my colleague and uh, our B manager and product specialist, Amela Memic, will teach you how to use our integrated BIM platform, Bexel Manager, and all lessons will be based uh, on our educational document step-by-step -step workflow guide so you can easily follow that and don't worry if you missed something all lessons will be recorded and uh, enjoy and learn something new amela and the screen is yours now okay thank you i hope that you hear me Okay, so my name is Amela Memic and first of all, I would like to say welcome to our free online education series of webinars and good morning, good afternoon and good evening to everyone who will participate today and further on. So this series of webinars is designed to follow the sequence of chapters or should I say lessons covered in the document step-by-step -step workflow guide which we have released in this summer. So let's start on the beginning with explaining what you will need to follow our series of webinars. So this is our website Bexel Manager and if you would like to get our software, you can visit our Bexel Manager website and then click on the trial request section. Within this section, you have a standard trial and educational license. So if you click on the standard trial, and on the request trial this form will will appear so please fill up the form and uh, when we receive the uh, this form we will send you back a 30-day uh, license for all of you who would like to um, who already have Paxel manager the trial version uh, we will prolong it until this webinar. Okay, so as I said before, uh, under the trial requests, 
you have also the educational license. And as Mileta said, the educational license is intended to support the education and contains a free annual license for all students, PhD candidates and university professors. So both the standard and the educational license come along with a fully developed 3D BIM sample, which is ready for 4D, 5D and of course 3D BIM analysis. Along with the sample model and along with the license, you will get also the best for, for our user area. So what is the user area? Okay, uh, when you log in to the user area, you can see that it is divided in three different sections. If you click on the materials section, you will see that it is divided in several subfolders. For example, our already mentioned step-by-step -step workflow guide is under the section manuals. And here you can also get the handbook and here you can also get the handbook and the manual. So um, the handbook is a document which explains common BIM workflows uh, through the use of Bexel Manager. And the manual explains the use of the tools. Okay, so if you go back, you have also, if you uh, go further on, you have also the section tutorials. For example, if you are a fan of video tutorials, we have prepared uh, them so you can watch them. And our video tutorials are also accompanied with um, subscribes so you can read also um, about them. The add-ins and epi scripts are actually uh, also covered, two topics also covered in the step-by-step -step guide. So if you would like to know more about the information about just these two topics, please just activate the EpiScript section and the add-ins section. As we have prepared a lot of manuals, we have also created more uh, sample models, which are located under the sample project sections. For example, this is a Bexel large-scale sample project, uh, where you can find a project which contains uh, several buildings and also a PDF document where you can read how to create a PD, uh, a 5D uh, BIM model. Uh, this document, Proby-based Bexel Infrastructure Sample Project, contains not only the IFC file, but also a manual which explains how to create a PDF B, uh, a PD uh, B model, 5D B model, uh, I apologize, um, upon the properties that the, the project contains. So for all of you who use the Archicad, you can download this sample. And today we will work on the Revit-based Bexel sample model. So this webinar is not the first one that was released. Our colleague Mile Tapejovic had a series of webinars a couple of months ago. So if you would like to uh, watch uh, something about uh, the, those themes that were covered in recent webinars, just click on this section. And to create a 5D B model, you can use the databases that are stored here under the databases section. Okay, so let's go back. As I said, here is the Bexel Manager step-by-step -step workflow guide 
and just if you would like to download it just click on this link and after you will download uh, this uh, after you will download this document and extract it you will see that it is divided in four different folders the first one contains a complete sample model with all analysis the second one contains a start model which has no analysis and then we have the lessons folder which is divided by lessons in the manual and then you have the user manual which is actually a PDF document and as you can see it has around 350 pages and the processes described in this guide are defined by steps and accompanied with screenshots from our Bexel Manager software. Okay, so I hope that I have introduced you with all the materials that you will need. If any questions occur, please contact us uh, at, uh, via email support at bexelmanager.com. So now we will start with lesson one and lesson two in Bexel Manager. But before we start, I would just to li like to share with you the information about how to change the language of our interface. So as Mileta said, currently our interface is translated in several different languages. And if, it, if you would like to change the language of the interface, right click on the Bexel Manager icon and then on the properties command. A Bexel Manager 20 properties opens and in the shortcut tab you have the target section. So after the language part just enter the abbreviation for a certain language and then click on the OK button. So I have decided that my interface will be in English, but it can be also uh, presented in German, French, Italian, Spanish, and I think also Korean. So just to let you know, uh, we will also uh, we will also uh, try to translate our software in as many um, languages as possible also further on. So now we will begin with lesson one. The title of the lesson one is activation of the software projects and versions. So if the user would like to open a project for a quick check you can use the drag and drop option. For this process, we will use the folders that are in the lesson one. For example, if you go to the document Bexel step-by-step -step workflow guide, and if you click on the lessons folder, within the lessons uh, folder lesson one you will find the exchange files you need to pursue the analysis that are described in lesson one so if you would like to use the drag and drop option to open certain files for example a bx3 file just drag drag them to the welcome screen and a new project will be created. So as you have seen in the exchange file, uh, in the exchange folders, you have the PX3 files and the IFC files. The PX3 files are created when 
you are modeling in Revit and you use the BX3 publisher because when you are dealing with a huge amount of information and bigger projects, a BX3 file makes an easier import from Revit to Bexel Manager. And the second file format, which was in the exchange folders, is the IFC file, which is, of course, a file that is used uh, um, by the softwares who support the OpenBIM standard, because our software uh, enables an IFC import and an IFC export. So, now you can see that we have created an untitled project using the drag and drop option and this is the name of the version of this project and every version that will be created further on will be saved within this project so uh, this option is used when you would like to quickly re review a project and then go back to the Bexel icon to close this interface and to go to the welcome screen. This welcome screen has the recent project section and within this you will see the list of projects that were recently opened in Bexel Manager. So if you have opened the Excel Manager for the first time, of course, this recent project section will be empty. The next option is to use this command, which is open sample project. As I said before, uh, while you will um, register and get the 30-day trial license or the educational license, you will also get a fully developed 3D BIM model, which is prepared for 3D, 4D, and 5D BIM analysis. So if you would like to open this sample project, just click on the command within the welcome window. Here is the name of the project. In this case, this will not be an untitled project, but a Bexel sample project. Then you have the name of the version, and here you can change the currency of, uh, of the model. Currently it is in Slovenian, but you can also change it in any different, any other country you would like to change. And then just click on OK. And that's the way how you can open the sample project. In the next option, uh, we will use the command new. So first of all, I will close the project, which is the untitled, and as you can see, the interface appears and it is totally empty. Now I will go back to the welcome screen and I will use the command new to create a new project. This project will be named Lesson 1 and the pre project first version will be named Version 1. So you can add the description if needed and afterwards, uh, afterwards after the section file, under the section file, you have the button which is named choose multiple. So now we will go to the desktop and we will activate the Pexel step-by-step workflow guide, the folder lesson one, and here you have the exchange folder and the BX3 files and of course the IFC files. So I will use the first two and the second and the third one I will use to create an update process of the project and I will edit during the, the update process. So 
Then I click on the open button. And here within the add new project, I will click on the OK button again. And the software is creating a new project. Okay, so now this project is open and if you would like to know some basic information about it, I advise you to go to the Manage tab and to click on the Project Information command. Here is a tab called Statistics and you can see that this project contains two sources, over 10,000 of elements, 36 categories and over 150 families, one building and five stories. And then just click on OK button. The next command which can be useful is the rename project. Here you can define a new version name. So you can change the name of the version, but you cannot change the name of the project. Every project which is created in Bexel Manager is saved on the C disk of your uh, computers. And if you would like to change the location of the saved file, go to the Settings tab and click on the General Settings command and here you see the project folder. Click on the OK button. For me this location is OK but just, just to let you know that you can change that also. And every version which will be created during, during this project will be saved in, uh, in the project folder. Okay, so I hope that, every, that if you have any questions, my co-workers, uh, Philip and Alexander, are here to answer them. So now we will go through the update process just to show you how to add another submodel. We will go back to the welcome screen and we will close this project. And then I will activate the command projects and versions. In the manage projects and versions window, you can see the list of all the projects and activate the project named lesson one and the version one. When you choose a certain version, you can see that these commands activate and just click on the update command and define the new version name because during the process of the update a new version always occurs. Now you can add the description if needed and go to the file section and click on the choose button and now we will add the structural demo sample model, a BX3 file and we will click on the open button. Within the create updated version, we will click on the OK button and the updating project begins. So in the match sources window, we have the incoming column where the name of the source which you will add during the update process is stated. In the match to source column, you will define a new source because you are adding a completely new source and just click on the OK button. And in the missing elements column, you will choose the option keep and add to selection. So click on the OK button and the process begins. As you can see, a new version has appeared 
in the project and versions window. So click on the version 2 and then on the open button. Okay, uh, the new version is opened and it looks the same as before. So now we will go back to the manage tab and we will click on project information. And as you, as you can see, now we have three different sources. When you would like to review the sources which your federated model contains, click on the sources command. And within it, there is a list of all the sources that are a part of your federated model. Now you can see that we have three different sources. The first one is the architectural. The second was, one is the MIP demo model. And the third one is structural demo sample. I would like to talk about this hide empty sources. If you are dealing with a model which contains dozens and dozens of different sources, it is advised that you uncheck this, um, uh, this option because if you uncheck it, then you will also see on this, in this list all sources which contain zero elements. And um, it's good to know that some elements have zero uh, some sources have zero elements because, th because this is the first notification that maybe something is wrong with a certain source. Okay, so close this window. And now we will go back to the welcome screen and we will activate the command project and versions. So in this project, we have th uh, two different versions and we have also created an untitled project and a version where you can actually see the date when this version was created. So because we don't need uh, so many versions, we can just click on a certain version and on the button delete and the software notifies you that if this is the only version that the whole project will be deleted. So if you're sure that you would like to delete a version, just click on the OK button. And for example, if you would like to create a copy of a certain version, for example version 1 or version 2, you can either choose one of them and then just click on the copy command and define a new version name, for example, version 3. You can change the culture and click on the OK button. And now you have also a new version which is, called, which is named version 3. So now we are moving to the interface of our software. And for that matter, we will use the Bexel sample project start, which is actually located in the Bexel step-by-step -step workflow guide document. And this model does not contain any analysis and as you can see it has also applied textures and different colors. So now we will talk about Building Explorer which is located on the left side and uh, we will talk about the property step which is located on the right side of the screen. Uh, those two palettes are introduced in the lesson two, which is named or titled a quick review of the BIM model. So what is actually the Building Explorer? The Building Explorer enables the user 
to explore the project. This project was actually modeled in the Revit software uh, because I have to mention that our software is not a BIM authoring tool. It is rather a BIM management tool. And that's why it's really important that we also uh, can import IFC files, uh, which were created in different BIM authoring tools. And well, why have I mentioned that? Because in Revit, those elements were defined by categories and families. And the preview of all categories is seen in the element structure tab. As you can see, the building explorer is divided in four different, uh, four different tabs, spatial structure, systems, and work set structure. So now, if you, for example, choose the category beams, you will see that the category beams contains 10 different groups. Within this category, you have 10 different families. So now, just click in the viewport with the right click and choose option isolate in the contextual menu and selected elements. Now you can see that you have selected or isolated all elements that are a part of the beams category. And as you can see, in front of every category, you have a circle which is colored yellow, light gray, or should I say white, and orange. If the circle is colored yellow, that means that all elements from this family or this category is seen and active in the viewport. If the color of the circle is light gray, that means that these categories are not seen in the viewport. And if it is colored orange, this means that some of the categories, some of elements are seen in the viewport and some of them are not. You can activate different categories by clicking on circles and you can review those categories then in the viewport or you can just click on a certain family within a category and you will see which elements are a part of this family. So now we will go to the spatial structure and we will collapse the list. And now you can see that all categories and families of this project are divided by stories. These stories or levels uh, were also defined in the BIM authoring tool, which is Revit in this case but you can change the information regarding the location of a BIM element in our software. For example, sometimes it occurs that a certain element is physically placed in a second floor, but the information regarding its location states that it is in the third floor. So you can then activate the Manage tab and go to the edit spatial structure. And here you have the command move to a building story or to a building or to a story. And you will not physically move this BIM element. You will just change the information about the location of the BIM element. As you can see, this building is divided in sublevel. And if you go, to the viewport and isolate those elements, you will see which elements belong to the sub-level. Or you can just click on the circle in front of every story and the stories will appear. 
of course if you are dealing with a larger project which consists from several buildings uh, this spatial structure will not be divided only by levels it will also be divided by building and every building be will be divided then in certain levels okay so now we will go back to the building explorer and the systems tab here you can see that all elements are divided in different systems this is also defined in the BIM authoring tool and then you have also the work set structure um, which is linked to the work set name property so if this work set property um, work set name property is defined in the BIM authoring tool then those elements will be categorized like here but if this work set name property is not defined then they will not be divided here is actually a list of commands which is active in every single tab the first one is show all elements the second one invert visibility and then you have the command collapse all and expand all um, there is also a filter option where if you enter for example abbreviation AR and click on the filter there will be the list of all elements who contain the R abbreviation in the name of the family if you would like to cancel this filter just click on the cancel filter so enough about the building explorer we will show all elements and we will go to the properties palette which is located on the right side of the screen so the properties palette gives you an overview of all properties that a certain element or a group of element contains i will select for example all elements and if you would like to be sure that all all properties are listed click on the property command and choose the option and filters command and within it you have an option check all so if you click on it you will check that everything every uh, property will be seen in the properties palette so now we will explain how you can select elements based on a certain property for example if you would like to know how many elements of this project have a certain property let's say a master format property select it and click with right click and choose the option select elements with this property and then all and if you would like to review if in your project uh, exist elements to that don't have this property go to the viewport click in the empty space with the right click and choose the option hide and then selected elements now you can see that only four elements are in the viewport and if I choose them and go to the property tab you will see that in the text group there is no master format property so those four elements do not have the master format property and why is that in, uh, important because if you will be dealing with 3d 4d and 5d beam analysis that uh, will be based on the master format property or any other chosen property those elements who will not have the certain property will not be included in the 
BIM analysis. Okay, so now we will go to the Building Explorer and we will activate the Show All Elements command and we will also select the whole project. Now we will go back to the Properties palette because now we can see that some of the elements do not have the chosen property and I would like to review what are the values for this property. So I will click with the right click on the master format property and then I will choose the option view values of property. In the property values window I will choose under the filter the option all categories and on the right side in the window the list of all values is shown. The first value is actually an empty row and that means that some of the properties do have the, the property, some of the elements have the property master format but do, do not have a defined value for it. So I will click on this row so it colors blue and in the selection uh, selection section I will choose the new selection option and I will click on the select. So now I would like to review which elements have the master format property but do not have the value for it and I will activate the contextual menu and I will click the option isolate and then select it elements. So in the Building Explorer you can see that elements who are part of the category sites, spaces and some other elements do not have the value for the master format property. So those elements will also not be a part of the BIM analysis or they will be but the value will not be defined. Okay, so in the next step we will choose the category spaces and we will isolate this category because I will show you the process of how to create a new property within Pexel Manager. Although those properties were defined uh, during the process of modeling in the BIM authoring tool you can also add properties in Pexel Manager and this is the process. Click on the property command within the properties palette and click on the new command. A new property window opens and you can define the property name for example adding new property. You can define an existing group or you can define a new group where your property will be placed. So if you go to the properties palette you can see that properties are divided in several groups. So I will just click on the group section and I will define a new group. And then I will define that this property will be a textual property and I will click the OK button. So now if we review our property tab, this new property is not listed so we will go back to the property and we will click on the option and filters and we will use the check all commands command and then on the we will click on the OK button. So now you can see that a new group is listed and a new property that we have created. If for any reason you would like to delete a certain property just click on it within the property tab so it colors blue with right click and use the delete command. The software 
notifies you or asks you if you're sure that you would like to delete a selected property and then just click on the OK button and the property will be deleted. Okay, so uh, now we will go back to our project that we have created which is actually the lesson one project and the version uh, two which contains three different sources and we will talk about lesson three. Lesson three is titled visual processing of the model. As you can see this model is colored but not ele elements or colored and it does not have any texture on it. So now what we will do, we will go to the manage tab and we will click on the command named element colors. So if you click on the arrow next to it, you can choose a command which is named reset to default colors. That means that you will change the color palette of this project to the default to the default color palette of the software. If you would like to change the appearance of the model, you can also use the command reset to source colors. And now this is the color palette defined in the sources beam of thawing tool because as we have mentioned before we cannot change the geometry of this beam model in Bexel Manager but we can change the appearance of the model. So now we will choose a certain category and we will apply a certain texture to this chosen category. For example Go to the Building Explorer and choose the category Walls. Click with the right click in the empty space so the contextual menu appears and choose the Isolate command and then the Selected Elements option. Now go to the Manage tab and click on the Texture Editor and the texture editor window appears. As you can see, it is totally empty. And first we will create a new folder, which will be named concrete. Now click on the OK button and then click on the concrete button, uh, on the concrete folder. Here you have the commands as for example add texture and just click on this command and go to the Bexel step-by-step -step workflow guide and use for example this folder Bexel Manager Sample Project we start because within this folder you have the texture folder and these are the textures uh, that are applied on the start model. So use the concrete texture and then click on the open button. In the X add texture window, you can define the name and I will click on the OK button. So now you have here the concrete material and I will add, I will click the add mapping command. So this material will apply to certain elements. Uh, the tile section means that you define how small or big the pattern of the texture will be. So in the first step, we will define it as one. And here in the mapping mode, we will choose the box option. If you have an irregular geometry, then you can use the option cylindrical. 
In the target mapping mode, you will choose the selected elements option and then we will click on the OK button. So if we click on this texture, we will see here on which elements and different families this pattern has been applied or may I say which texture was applied to a certain element. Just click on the texture editor and go to the viewport to review if the texture was applied and it is but as you can see the pattern is really small so now we will go back to the texture editor and we will click on it with right click and we will choose the edit option and within the tile section we will enter for example number 8 and then we will click again on the OK button. Close the texture editor and you will see that the, that the appearance of the texture has changed. So now you can choose a certain category from the Building Explorer, for example, planting which are the trees and you can isolate them and add another texture. For example, click on the texture editor. First create a new folder which will be named planting. and then click on the OK button. Then click on this folder and on the Add Texture command and choose the Trees texture and then click on the Open button. And within the Add Texture window click on the OK button again. So now go to the Add Mapping command and define the tile for, for those trees. And in our case, we will enter number one and we will click on the OK button. And again, here is the list of all families on which this pattern or texture was applied. So close this window and go back to the viewport and as you can see the pattern is too small so we will go back to the texture editor and we will edit it by changing the tile to 15. So now I will go to the Building Explorer palette and I will click on the command show all elements. As you can see, some new texture has been applied to our model. Of course, you can use additional other categories to apply some different materials that you can find within the step-by-step -step workflow guide and uh, the folder named Start Model. So now I think that we have covered all topics that are mentioned in the Lesson 1, Lesson 2 and Lesson 3. So I will um, tell you thank you for listening and uh, I hope that my colleague has answered all your questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we had a question about where you can download everything. I will go to our website. Just a second. Our website. 
as I said before, this is pexelmanager.com website and there you have the Pexel user area and under the menus section within the user materials in the user area you can download the Pexel Manager step-by-step -step workflow guide which contains as I said the start model with no analysis, the complete model which contains all analysis, the lesson folder which is divided in nine different lessons which are also described in the step-by-step -step workflow, workflow guide and also you can get a PDF document. So this so-called step-by-step workflow guide. Another thing is that uh, I have talked about how you can change the language of the interface and I can tell you that the list of abbreviations is also covered in the lesson one of the step-by-step -step workflow guide. So for now I would like to thank you and I hope you have found out some new and interesting and exciting information about Pexel Manager and good afternoon and we will see each other or hear each other tomorrow again for the lesson four. Thank you and goodbye.